So you understand that you're an Israelite, right? Yeah. Okay. How do you know that you're an Israelite? I guess because it says it right there. Okay. <laughs> you believe in the Bible, my sister? Not all of it. I feel like some of it is like metaphors and principles, like analogies. Like, like a. How do you pronounce that? Like analogies. analogies. Ain't that a word? Are we, are we to uh, an analogies. Analogies. Okay. Analogies. I got you. I got you. You didn't threw me all. Where you from, Richmond, sis? No, people say I sound like I'm from North Carolina. Where you from? Richmond. You from Richmond? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the Bible does use metaphors, uh, analogies, similitudes, but you still gotta believe in them. All right. There's still lessons that we're supposed to learn from those metaphors, from those. Um, analogies. You're gonna got me tripped up. That's right. <laughs> you done got me tripped up. All right. What part of the Bible don't you believe in? Adam and Eve. Because you don't have an understanding of Adam and Eve. I feel like that story is another analogy. Okay. So the the way the story was depicted to you about um, a man, um, well, a woman biting an apple, this, that, and the third. It just don't make sense to you, right? I feel like the apple won the apple, but it was just like knowledge. Yeah, you you, you hitting on something, sis. You hitting yeah. on something. Yeah, the, the Bible. Who, who got that for me and Jose? I spoken by uh, similitudes and all that. Who, who knows what I'm talking about? I think it's like Hosea chapter 4 and 12. Let's go there. Go to Hosea chapter 4, verse 12. And we'll, we'll go into Adam and Eve a little bit. We'll go into Adam and Eve a, a little bit after I give you some laws and you show me you got a spirit of repentance. How about that? I'll make a deal with you. That's not it? All right. So uh, the Bible says, is it 6 and 12? 12 and 10. Okay. Hosea chapter 12, verse 10. So the sister made a good point. She said, I don't know about that Adam and Eve story. Um, it just, it sounds more like a metaphor or a similar to. And you're absolutely correct. Read that. The book of Hosea, chapter 12 and verse 10. Uh -huh. I have also spoken by the prophets. So the Bible says that the Lord has spoken by the prophets. The person who wrote the book of Genesis was Moses. He was a prophet. So the Bible says that I have spoken by the prophets. Read. And I have multiplied visions and used similar to. Used what? Similar to. So the Bible says that the Most High God in his writings in the Bible will use similitudes. So for instance, in the, in, the, in the Garden of Eden, when it says there was a serpent, was it talking about a serpent, like a snake slithering around talking? Probably. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. If I was a sneaky type of person, what would you say? I'm a what? You're a snake I'm a snake. Rat. I'm a snake. Yeah, that's, that's a snake in the grass type dude right there. You see that? It's, it's easy for us to understand that in common uh, conversation. But when we read the Bible, we don't realize that the people writing the book are the same people that you have those common conversations with. That's right. That's right. Moses was a black man. That's right. So guess what? The language that he wrote in was the same language that you and I would speak in. That's right. The Most High God in the heavens is another black man. Do you understand that? That's right. Oh, yeah. You, you do understand that or are you saying, oh, yeah? Yeah, I understand. You understand that the Most High God is black? You understand that Christ is black? You understand that everybody in this book is black? Yeah. So you know this is your book then? Yeah. So, it, so it's, not, it's nothing for you to doubt in when it comes to this book, Sister Amira. What you have to do is return back to this book and start applying what's written in the book. Yeah. Read that again from the top. I have spoken by the prophets uh -huh. and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So the Bible says that similitudes will be used. So yeah, if, if you don't have the understanding of some of these stories, they may trip you up. You know, you read about Adam and Eve and then you read about, you know, you're like, damn, well, where, where all these other people come from if it all just started with Adam and Eve? All that can be explained in the Bible. All right. But go to Deuteronomy chapter 10. So, Sister Amir, if you understand that you're an Israelite, okay, this is what the Bible requires of you. The Bible requires certain things of you. Your attire, God requires something. The holidays that you celebrate, God requires something. The food that you eat, God requires something of you. And it's our job to show you those things that God requires, all right? Check this out. 10 and 12. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. Uh -huh. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So my sister Amira, when the Bible says Israel, 
Do you understand that the Bible's talking about you? Yeah. Because you're an Israelite from what tribe? Say Gad. The tribe of Gad. Yeah. You're an Israelite from the tribe of Gad. So when the Bible says, O Israel, the Lord is simply saying, A mirror, this is what I want for you to do. Right. These are the things that I need you to follow. These are the things that I need you not to follow. Keep reading. But to fear the Lord thy God. You got to fear God. To walk in all his ways. You have to walk in his ways. And to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God. So, Amira, you must learn to love and serve God. The Bible is going to explain how do you fear him, love him, and serve him. Read. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord. So, Amira, how do you fear, love, walk in the ways, and serve God? Keeping the commandments. By keeping the commandments. Keep reading. And his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. All right, good. God has commanded you to do certain things and commanded you not to do other things for your good. Right. Only for your good. None of the commandments that God gave you are for your detriment. They're not evil for you. Right. You being married and not committing adultery is for your good. Bring that up. And the good of your children That's and the good of your husband. Are you married, my sister? No. You not? No. Okay, do you wish to be married? Yeah, but without paperwork. Oh. Why is that? Because I don't want the government involved. Okay. Not, I can understand that. I can understand that. Because we are subject to, to our enemies and one of all things. We don't want to have to uh, come to a union with one of our own brothers or sisters and have to go to our oppressor to solidify that union. We understand that. But sister, at one point in time, we didn't have to go to our oppressors for that. That's right. We had our own institution set up to provide uh, marriage papers for our husbands and wives. Right. Nah, that's not one of our customs, my sister. That's not one of our customs. But because we sin, because we stopped keeping God's commandments, now we must go to our enemies in want of all things. Right. So God is going to require that when you get married, you have to go to your oppressor to get a piece of paper to solidify your marriage. Because it's one of our customs that we have marriage paperwork, official marriage paperwork. And the only official marriage paperwork that you're gonna get here is if you go to the government. All right, so I know it's tough, tough luck, you know, I'm sorry to hear that, but <laughs> until you repent and we're back in our kingdom, that's what we have to do. Right. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and five. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse five. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. All right, Sister Amira, before you get married, God wants to draw a clear line of distinction between the man and the woman. But let's get the camera on. I got a brother right here. And I got my sister Amira right there. All right. My brother got on, what, sweatpants? And my sister got on sweatpants. My brother got on a pullover. My sister got on a hoodie. I can't tell the difference between the man and the woman as far as their apparel. Right. Why is that, my sister? Because I guess pants are for men. There you go. Uh, that's right. That's right. There you go. That's sister, right. you got some understanding. You got some understanding. You know how hard it is for a woman to comprehend that pants were not created for her? Pants are recorded in the Bible and they are not recorded as an article of clothing for our sisters. They were created for men, for the priests. Give me that in Exodus 28. Give me that in Exodus chapter 28. What is it, 28 verse 47? 28 and 41. All oh, praise, my, my, I got an armor bearer over here. Give me Exodus chapter 28 verse 41. So I'm going to read this to you, my sister. 42? All right. For all the skeptics out there who thought all the men wore dresses and togas in the Bible. That is a lie. That's right. You won't find anybody in the Bible wearing a dress or a toga that's a man. Togas are Greekish fashions. They're not Israelite fashions. Right. What you're looking at right here is an Israelite fashion. When you read about a long garment in the scriptures, and I'm going to read you a, a description of that, you're reading more about a garment that looked like this, not a Greek toga. Check this out. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 28 and verse 42. Uh, whole verse 40. Uh, no, nah, read that. 40, 42. Wait. And thou shalt make them linen breeches. Linen what? Linen breeches. Sister Amira, what they call pants back in the day? What's your great grandma say to you? Breeches. Pull them breeches. Pull up your breeches, boy. Yeah. Breeches come from the word breeches. 
Breaches and britches and pants are in the Bible from the book of Exodus. Read that. To cover their nakedness. Huh? To cover their nakedness. The Bible says these pants are to cover our nakedness. Right. Y'all don't got no external nakedness. Y'all nakedness is on the inside. Pants were never created for the women. Read. From the loins, even unto the thighs, uh -huh. they shall reach. So what you're reading about here is short pants from the loins down to the thigh. Read. And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons. Upon who? Aaron and upon his sons. His daughters? His sons. Read. When they come in, in unto the tabernacle of the congregation, uh -huh. or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place, that they bear not iniquity and die. It shall be a statute forever until him and his seed after him. The Bible says that pants were created for Aaron and his sons forever. Yes, yes, right. Right. Pants were never allowed for our sisters. Right. So a part of your repentance, remember the Bible says God created these, these commandments for your good. It's good for a woman not to wear pants. Right. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.